Dear Patriots, thoughts from a vet. I agree with the choice to withdraw from Afghanistan because we should have never been there in the first place. But to leave before our embassy was emptied, before Americans working and living in Afghanistan were secured, and before our interpreters and their families had been evacuated is disgraceful and will only ensure that the U.S. will struggle to find trustworthy Native allies in future conflicts. We invaded Afghanistan to fight Al-Qaeda after 9-11. That was the tagline. But we could have choked the Taliban and Al-Qaeda's finances without stepping a foot into Afghan territory. We could have used our intel and vast technological capabilities to pinpoint their financial streams and cut them off. We could have used severe sanctions against any nation who we already knew were funding them. We could have used airstrikes to destroy their weapons caches and their arms routes. We could have examined NGOs and charitable organizations that worked as fronts to fund terrorism. But we didn't do any of that, not really. Instead, we started a war that we knew couldn't be won, costing 2,300 American lives and over 20,000 wounded in action. And what did the American people get in return? Nothing, but I'll tell you who did. Defense contractors like Lockheed Martin, BAE Systems, Boeing, and General Dynamics. And of course, their shareholders. To be clear, shareholders doesn't only mean the millionaires and the billionaires of the world, but also the many American middle-class retirees that depend on the extra income to make ends meet. And there's the rub, isn't it? In total, the U.S. and its allies spent $778 billion on defense from 2001 to 2019. And if you don't think that wealth creation was a factor when Bush decided to invade Afghanistan, wake up. But here we are. We knew that we couldn't remain in Afghanistan forever. And I agree with the withdrawal, just not in the way it was done. I'll remind you that Obama released terrorist leaders from Guantanamo Bay in 2016 and that $778 billion worth of weapons and technology that were left behind are now in their hands. And that China has officially recognized the Taliban as a legitimate governing body. And that thanks to Biden, we have an open Southern border. Do you see where this is going? It's hard to believe that anyone was caught off guard, that this was all unexpected because Trump said that we would withdraw by May 1st of this year and that was common knowledge. The generals knew it, Mark Milley knew it, and there was ample time to plan. Instead, they focused on critical race theory and gender studies in the military, and China's Navy is now more powerful than ours. So what can we Americans do right now about these developing events? Prepare, I mean it. Train your body, your mind, and your spirit so that you're physically, mentally, and spiritually able to weather this storm because it is coming. Our societies, communities, and our nation as a whole have been systemically weakened for the past 20 years. The time to push back is now. We need to regroup and restore our American identity, our convictions, our mores, and our standards, or we will not have the power and the strength needed to defend ourselves from foreign threats. To the Afghan people longing for peace, our hearts go out to you. To Bush and Obama, this is your doing. You own it. To Trump, you knew this was coming. You were negotiating with the Taliban. You should have tried harder and you should have done it faster. To Biden and his puppet masters, your open borders and the chaos you have caused have put our nation at great peril. We may not know who you are yet, but we will. Stay strong, patriots. God bless America. When Sleepy Joe was talking about what he was going to do for us, the American people. What is one of the things that he said? It's hard to believe that this has to be said, but unlike this president, I'll do my job and take responsibility. I won't blame others. And I'll never forget that the job isn't about me, it's about you. All right, so y'all just remember that. So if you watched my last episode, I talked about how Biden was at Camp David on vacation while all of this stuff in Afghanistan was going on. And so his handlers were probably like, hey, Joe, you probably 
should come back and say something. You know, I know margaritas are important. I know ice cream cones are important. I know sniffing things is important, but you should probably come back and say something. This is what he says in his press conference. Afghanistan political leaders gave up and fled the country. The Afghan military collapsed sometime without trying to fight. All right. Way to take responsibility, Joe. Look, it's no big secret that we've wanted to get out of Afghanistan for a long ass time. Trump had it in place, ready to go. But Sleepy Joe, just because something needs to be done, does it mean that you do it not being prepared? Does it mean that you do it without knowing what the hell is going on? It's kind of like somebody needing a haircut and they're real picky about how their hair is done. And you have two options. You can either do it yourself at home or you can go to a barber shop. This is the same thing. We were not prepared. So Biden gives this speech. I thought he was gonna just totally fumble through it. He actually did decently except for this one thing. Time, limited in scope and focused in its it took me like three or four times to figure out what he was saying there. But then after 20 minutes of giving this long, grueling speech that took so much energy out of him, I mean, at one point, it looked like he was going to go down again and start whispering. Left again to ask of those who argue that we should stay. Bow to your sensei. Bow to your sensei! How many more generations of Americans... He goes back on vacation right after. Meanwhile, the Taliban are having a big old round table meeting in the presidential palace in Kabul. And then on top of this, our state department is trying to get the Taliban to include women in their government. All right, this is what I don't get. Sleepy Joe, you totally botch the exit of the US citizens and our troops out of Afghanistan. The Taliban takes over and then you think that you're gonna try to apply the same woke BS that you're trying to apply here to the Taliban? They are savages. They cut people's heads off just because of their nationality. They're screaming in the streets currently, death to America. They're just chanting death to America. And y'all wanna take the woke approach. Let me get real with everyone for a second, especially the people who voted for this clown. Now you understand why we don't buy into your woke BS. Now you understand why we appreciate our military and our law enforcement. All of y'all woke lefties who think that you are going to have all of your issues solved if Sleepy Joe got in the White House. I'm sorry to tell you, but you not being comfortable being born with a dick is not an issue. We don't care. That is not a US issue. That's either a mental issue or a you issue that you need to deal with. What is our problem is now thousands of Taliban terrorists that want us dead have been released. Where do you think they're gonna go? What do you think is on their mind? Do you think it's on their mind that when they try to come to the US, they're gonna be like, well, I mean, I didn't, I'm not wearing a mask, so I don't know if I can go into this target. We are in total chaos. Forget all this stuff. Forget everything about what is going on in our country right now. Forget about all of it. Left, right, woke, old school, forget it. Now we have a very different issue. And it's that if we aren't respected or we don't get respected soon as a nation, one of these outside countries that hates us may grow some balls and may try to bring a war to us. And then what I would like to see is all of you woke people who are worried about all of these BS issues like men and women's sports and talking about critical race theory in school. I want you on the front lines trying to pitch that stuff to the Taliban or another terrorist organization. You on the left 
are clueless. On the issue of critical race theory. But I do think it's important, actually. I want to understand white rage, and I'm white. Now you understand, Mark Milley, why we don't care about you talking about white rage and critical race theory. And now you understand why we defend our right to own guns. The moral of what I'm trying to say is we need to bring America's balls back. We need to drop all of the woke BS issues. Because right now, our leadership is weak and other countries that hate us see it.